Gear Patrol calls their new dive watch the best sub $500 dive watch. Full stop. Men's Health rated them as the most stylish solar watch in the game. Who are we talking about? It's movement. They're leveling up your gift giving with the sleekest watches you can buy and the biggest deals of the season. Shop 30 to 50% off Movement's innovative California clean watches, jewelry, and accessories with fast free shipping and returns now at MVMT.com. That's MVMT.com. Hello and welcome back to the Potted Together podcast. I am the hostess with the mostest, <laughs> Adam, and I am joined by my two non mostest hostesses, Becca wow. and Nicole. Oh, wow. Sorry, is, is that too mean? Just kidding. You know I love you both. We don't have the most. You do. We have the mostest, actually. How are you guys today? I'm okay. Ooh, I'm feeling really chipper because it's sunny. It's sunny. Becca's not used to gray days in the Midwest. That's right. We had a conversation last night about how I need to buy some lamps, how I need to get some vitamin D supplements, and do the works, really. Make it, like, trick myself into thinking that I'm not living in a cloud (laughs) 24-7. Yeah. Becca, the photo you posted of you on the lawnmower was, it's it's maybe my favorite thing ever. (laughs) Oh, yes. The outfit, the face, the <laughs> confidence. I just, I love it all. The braid. It's the, perfect. <laughs> the braid. The concentration, really. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was really like, we, so we wanted to take out the lawnmower. As we spoke about in the last episode, the 61 inch deck, we've really taken it for a ride. Um, we took it around the entire perimeter. <laughs> <laughs> the entire perimeter. Wow. We took it around the back perimeter of our property because we have seven acres. Oh, Daniel would say 7.1 acres. Uh, <laughs> Gotta add the point one. But anyway, we took it around that back field because he wants to run. Daniel's a runner, so he wanted to have like a running track. So we – and also it's just easier for us to get to the to the back if we had a path because it's really overgrown, which I love because like deer go back there and like a bunch – it's like an animal reserve basically. Um mm-hmm. But we wanted to do the path, and so he was out in the front, like, clearing things, and then I was just, like, driving it really slowly, and it was great. We, oh, this makes me so sad. We mowed over so many trees, though, like baby trees. Yeah. Oh. Because they're just in the way, and I was like, man, I wish that I brought my shovel so that I could have moved them, but I don't know if that would have even worked. Yeah. I mean, they're going to, they're going to germinate like that crazy you know regardless if you have the maple isn't that the helicopter seeds is that maple i think that has, so like, the helicopters you know the helicopters know. with the seeds in them <laughs> she's like helicopters what oh my the gosh becca's gonna about? experience so many things there's these <laughs> one trees that have these like seeds that almost look like i would say like a comma yeah so there's a seed in the bottom and they have like a leaf and you throw them up in the air and they twirl down like helicopters you're kidding yeah Like the propellers on a helicopter. That is incredible. Yeah, so we did that. And (laughs) then we mowed around the barn because we have a little barn. It was so cool. I love using that that lawnmower. It was so much fun. I was like, I am in power now. (laughs) You looked like a bad bitch. Can I just say that? (laughs) In my brown fit. Do you like my brown fit? (laughs) Yes. Oh, we're going to have to get you some, like, linen or flannel-lined jeans for this yes. coming winter. Yes. Yeah. I'm realizing. And some thick old socks and some big old boots. Yeah. I'm realizing that I am ill-equipped for the weather. Um, I It was cold the last couple of days, and I literally was like, I have heavy coats and I have tank tops and that's it. I don't have anything in between because that's like all you need in Tucson. Like you have a heavy coat and that's you use it a few times a year. I've had the same coat since 2010. That's 10 years. Wow. It looks like I bought it yesterday because I never used it, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, that's good for me that I've had it for so long, but... It's just crazy. Like, I stress bought a bunch of patterns for, like, long sleeve shirts and stuff. 
and I'm going to make a bunch of stuff. I need to go get the fabric, but I was like, I have nothing. I need to like, mich- I need to like, what what is it? Like factory style, make a bunch of long sleeve shirts for myself yeah. because I just don't have anything. Yeah. Or just like woolly sweaters or something like that. Oh my gosh. I love wool. I love wool so much. So much so that I considered getting sheep and spinning my own wool. Oh. And then I found out how long that takes and I was like, eh, better not. <laughs> but how just amazing kidding. does that dream sound? I could Do you buy guys the... have a fireplace? Yeah, we do. Oh, nice. It's oh, a, a wood burning fireplace. Now I want to see you in your brown fit shaving a sheep <laughs> like i feel like that needs to be a thing <laughs> maybe Back a homesteader yeah maybe i will get sheep i mean we we talked about getting goats um or oh, well we definitely want to get chickens i personally want to get sheep because i love them but it's a lot of work and i have two jobs yeah. so <laughs> goats would yeah. be nice to maintain the yard or the right. field you know that's what exactly what my father-in-law said he's like if you th- you throw some goats out there, your your property's gonna look like a a park. And I was like, get okay. you, get yourself a horse. Horse are so expensive though. A Where horse. I was in Illinois. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. I, I was, need to I see a man you. about a horse. <laughs> I wait, Nicole. Did you think I said horse or I, I said goat? Did you? Did you no, just, I know like, you throw said out a horse. I did. I just threw it out there. I said, or you could get a horse, oh, but they're expensive. I thought I said horse <laughs> on accident. Okay. Sorry, Adam. Please go. <laughs> no. There was this, uh, when I lived in Illinois, when I drove to work in Bloomington, there was a small town that I had to drive through, and they always put goats in, like, this one field that was right by the road. And the fencing for that field was, like, it was a wire fence, but it was, like, with the squares. So, mm-hmm. like, it wasn't as small as chain link. Obviously, it was bigger, but it had the squares. Well, th- one goat would always stick his head and his horns through the fence to get the grass on the other side, but he couldn't ever come back through because of the horns to get a big kind of curve. Oh. So they started just like wiring a two by four board onto the onto the head of the goat <laughs> and his horns so he couldn't go through the fence. And honestly, it was one of my favorite things to see every morning when I drove through. <laughs> but I mean, like, why not just get a new fence? <laughs> <laughs> two by fours cost like two dollars new fence yeah. thousands so he just had it like wired around both horns and oh that just poor like... thing <laughs> oh my gosh that's hilarious goats are the though. best i love goats that is they're so fun funny. oh my gosh yeah so that's that's what's new with me really nothing new i'm still in the process of painting my cabinets which should have been done a week ago but it's not <laughs> because life but diy the life you know, of DIY. That DIY okay. life. But what about you guys? So this week was a total dumpster fire. Um, <laughs> well, not total dumpster fire. Let me clarify. Um, I'm a photographer. <laughs> Hi, that's me. And a lot of my sessions are outside. And it's the middle to end of October right now. And while October is beautiful, it's fall. Everybody wants their family sessions outside. I might have talked about this last week, but anyway, it's it's been the same kind of week. Like I've gotten rained out for 80% of my sessions. I think I've done two sessions, literally, and I had like 10 scheduled. And I just canceled my day today. I had to cancel tomorrow. It's just been nonstop rain. So um, and I'm going to Arizona next Thursday. So I'm Ooh. so excited. Um, But, like, kind of sucks, too, because I'm trying to fit these sessions in before I leave. And I'm running out of days and hours in the day. So, I don't know. I was able to reschedule for next week, but it looks like it's going to rain next week, too. So, it's just, like, whatever happens, happens. Like, if I have to do them when I get back, that's what it is, you know? Yeah. But that's pretty much been my week. I've been, like, on the phone rescheduling. Yesterday, I think I spent half the day talking to, like, four families back and forth. And it's just such a headache. Yeah. Everybody wants those fall colors for those Christmas cards. I know. And I posted mm. on my my business page um, at the Still Life Photos, if you guys want to go follow it. <laughs> um, on Instagram, I uh, I posted like six different pictures from sessions. And like just looking back at it, like all the colors are so, so pretty. Like I get why people want to have fall sessions. They're just yeah. so pretty. Speaking yeah. of Becca, you gotta 
you got to take your pictures and I'll and I'll edit them. Yes, I was just about to say we really need to get out there. <laughs> Maybe today because it's sunny. Yeah, and you have makeup on. Yeah, and I have makeup on already. But okay, yes. the moment your, we got you on got the phone, you got your filming face. <laughs> yeah, Adam goes, "Oh, look at you! You got your filming face on." And I was like, "Screw <laughs> you!" <laughs> uh, um, yes, I need to take those, and then if you're still down, I'd love a Nicole edit. A, the oh still yeah, life edit. Yeah, I'll for oh my sure gosh, do it. we'll see what I can come up with. If they're really bad, you'll okay. Anyway, I'll we'll talk about it personally. Um, <laughs> it won't be that bad. Adam, what's up? What's yeah. up? How's your oh. week? Uh, you know, it's been it's been a week. Um, yesterday, I didn't tell either of you this because this was like happening last night. But like, Cuddy, my dog, was just like nonstop throwing up, and like oh, to no. a point to a point where I was just like, "What more do you have inside of you?" And you know, he can't walk on his own. So Mm -hmm. it was just like there was it was just a mess. Um, So I'm like pulling paper towels off and just like holding them underneath him. It was just very stressful. He's then I made well, Steve made him some white rice and chicken Mm -hmm. um, because he just was like it was all night. He was throwing up, but he ate that and then he promptly fell asleep and he Mm -hmm. seems a lot better this morning. But it's just, you know. I think my time with him is short, and it's really hard to think about. And I don't want to be like a sad boy on this podcast, but um, oh no, but that's so difficult. Uh. Yeah. So he's better now today. I just, you know, I str- I go through these periods of struggling with feeling like I'm selfish, like that I'm keeping him around for for me. But I don't, I don't think that's the case because I think as pet owners, we all know like when time is up. Yeah. And he's still eating and he's still mm-hmm. happy to play. Last night was like a situation that was so weird because he doesn't get around. So I don't know what he got into or what was happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm just watching him a little bit today. But I think as pet owners, we know and like I just don't feel like, you know, it's that time yet. But yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, I mean, like you said, he's eating like that's the number one sign. Like if he yeah. wasn't eating or, you know, obviously throwing up's not good, but he could have easily just had like a bug or something or he could have gotten like you said gotten into something or something didn't agree with him or whatever yeah i blame patches it was probably patches she probably like slipped him something (laughs) she's like this is my house okay (laughs) he was when i was there like he was playing with leo and they were having so much fun like he yeah yeah. He tries. He tries hard. You know, he tries to play. I mean, he plays like tug of war with me all the time kind of situation. Mm-hmm. So it was just like a weird night. And then I was just very stressed about it. And then, you know, it just makes your mind start turning. And then I got like real sad about everything. But yeah. again, this morning he's a lot better. And he, I took him out to the bathroom and he was fine. And he drank some water. So... Mm-hmm. Mm. But as soon as he smelled that rice and chicken, he knew. Because I used to feed that to him when he was younger when he would – he's got a sensitive stomach. And so sometimes yeah. he would, like, eat things that just were bad, like diarrhea-wise. right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we have two pit bulls, and they're very sensitive too. Like, we have to be careful with what we give them too. But rice is good because it, like, binds them, so it kind of, like, helps yeah. with, like, nausea and stuff. You know, another good thing if he – experiences any other sickness is like raw pumpkin puree is supposed to be very good Mm -hmm. for their stomach too Mm. yeah so we keep a couple cans of that on hand just in case because jazzy's so sensitive but i'm glad that he's better yeah me too um funny story about pumpkin puree is i made this like really awesome dessert one time for my work food day and it called for pumpkin spice (laughs) <laughs> puree and I just used pumpkin and it was the worst tasting thing I've ever eaten in my entire life. <laughs> Did you bring There's... it to the event? Yeah. And then I was like, something's not, because I didn't taste it before, but then when I, I had a piece at work and I was like, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> I would have, my pride would have stopped me. I would have stopped at like the grocery store and picked something. Yeah. <laughs> so Whoopsies. that's why you don't cook. <laughs> yeah. You um, tried. But also this week, I finished Bly Manor, which no spoilers, but I also don't know how I feel about it. (laughs) Oh, you did finish it. Okay. So I'm curious to know. You don't, you don't think you liked it? I'm still confused. I like, granted, 
Well, no, I'm not going to say that. Yeah, because but... there's a lot of things you could spoil. Oh I liked it. We watched Hill House after... Well, I watched Hill House twice before I watched Bly Manor. And we watched Hill House again after we finished Bly Manor with Mia because Mia didn't see it. And Mia was like, honestly, I think I like Bly Manor better. But it's like a lot of the same characters are in them, but it's a totally different story. And I feel like you develop these relationships with these characters or these like connections with the characters. And then it's hard to picture them in another role like so soon after that. But I liked Hill House more. Yeah, me too. It was scarier. I'm a scarier kind of girl. So yeah, that was my excitement for the week. That was... Mm. You had a lot of excitement. Yeah. So let's get into today's topic, into today's topic. Uh, We're just going to have a plant chat, you know? We are, I don't know, going to talk about all things our plants, what we've learned maybe. I don't know. What do you guys think? Mm -hmm. Cool. We wanted to just do uh, a plant update just to talk about our plants. Nothing too structured and rigid but just to chat so yeah i hope you guys enjoy yeah so i guess maybe we should start with becca because your plants just had a journey yes (laughs) they did yeah and they're kind of going through it right now some of them are really going through it and namely my cactus Hmm. are are mostly unwell also adam i cannot stop looking at this gray streak in your hair it looks so cool it's oh, really my, cool. Yeah. Oh, I'm so jealous. I hope that I have that. <laughs> when the time comes, I hope to God that he blesses me with this. <laughs> it's the one gray streak. I love it. It looks so good. You know, okay, so back to the gray streak. When I was younger, I watched one of the Friday the 13th movies where the girl got, like, really scared, and then she developed a gray streak in her hair. <gasps> mm, I don't know Do that you one. remember that, Nicole? Maybe it was, like, the tooth. Th- I don't know. But yeah, and so like when I was younger, I was like, that happens, and now I have a gray, like, it's like a solid gray streak. Like, I have grays everywhere else, too, but like, there's like just a chunk of gray. Yeah. I don't know. It's like handsome. It's very becoming. You look great. Mm -hmm. Okay, Uh, calm down, Becca. Not to make you uncomfortable. Listen. Let's talk about your plants. Calm your tits. You make me sound like Wrong team. Wrong Wrong team. (laughs) I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that you're handsome. Nicole's beautiful. No, you, okay. You can. You're handsome. Okay. Nicole's beautiful. <laughs> oh, thank you. And you're welcome. Wait, did you guys see my shirt, though? Can you see that? I thought that said oh. nudes at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking vibes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm... And I'm we- I'm wearing it, and I'm unpotting all of my Lekka plants. And in the video that I'm filming right now, all you see is just fucking vibes through the whole video. And I was like, oh someone's God. gonna get offended by this and click out. But oh well, that is yeah. You're gonna so have to funny. you're gonna have to pixelate it, and then it'll just look like you're sitting there with like <laughs> no shirt on. <laughs> you're pixelating your your boobs or something like. <laughs> Ooh. Anyway. Um... <laughs> Let me talk about my plants, please. <laughs> oh, I miss you guys so much. I miss you guys. Oh, it's torturous being away. Um, so, let's get into your plants. We're they're yes. they're doing okay. So I've posted a few YouTube videos to this point uh, about how they're doing and stuff. So if you are wanting visuals. Go look at my YouTube channel, not to self-plug, but that would be helpful as well. Um, I made some videos about how to move with houseplants and all that kind of stuff. But also, we've had a significant amount of leaf loss, but not so much that it like my plants look bare or it was like on really any of the plants that I care about a lot, a lot. Like all my Monsteras still have all their leaves. Um, You know, well, my Monstera Deliciosa is like, Thai constellation and the albo and the green ones are probably like my most prized plants and they're all fine all my anthurium are fine it's really my cactus that have struggled the most and like one of them got this weird rot that like turned it black and it got really soft and Mm. it just like died from the inside out and I feel like that might have been due to cold or I don't really don't know 
what it was, but it was like one of those big, uh, like totem pole Sunita cacti, cacti mm-hmm. which I'm bummed about because I love them, but I'll just get another one. It's okay. So anyway, that happened. And then a lot of my euphorbia did not make it. My small euphorbia did not do super well. Um, my huge euphorbia is living its best life. It's super established. I think it would take a lot for that one to like have any sort of bad things. The white ghost? Yeah, my white ghost. You know, the one that's like okay. five feet tall? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. when plants are bigger and more established, they are just so much more hardy, I think. Like, oh, yeah, we- they've seen some shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> truly, especially under my care. When I've had them for a long time, too, they're just like, there. I have some plants that I just know I will probably never kill. Just, well, okay, knock on wood. But, you know, <laughs> like there are just some plants that I know are good for a very long time. And then there's more, there's more that I'm like iffy about. And those plants that I was kind of iffy about had, them had their moments. We lost some leaves, but everyone's okay. Um, what else? I'm starting to put together my sunroom, which is fun. I'm hanging That's plants. That's exciting. I'm using the clips that you use, Nicole. Yeah. Um, those are great. They're the best. I love them. They can carry so much weight. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Gosh, I feel like that's the only update as of right now. A lot of them are still in my sunroom because I just don't know what to do with them yet. Like, I want to put them mindfully around the house in places where they'll do well, but I just need to figure what that is. I need to figure out what that is first and, like, get acquainted with the house. Um, I was going to ask you, like, Mm -hmm. how your sunroom is doing. Like, how cold... Do you have a thermometer in there? Like, how cold is it getting at night? So... I have a heater in there now because oh, my okay. voice just cracked. <clears throat> I'm 13. And <laughs> yeah, so I have a heater in there now. And But before I did that, it was getting down into like the 50s in the sunroom. And it's not even that cold here yet. Like I've heard it gets mm-hmm. into the negatives. Oh, yeah. Which, yeah. yeah. Uh, That's pretty common. <laughs> it does not compute. It literally does not compute. I just want you guys to know I do not understand how that happens. What world does it go that far below? zero yeah, it goes Midwest. below zero i'm yeah, just it's your world now babe it's your world it's, your world. <laughs> it's my world okay so let me like two second interim here but like it, it we had like two episodes of polar vortex here like two years in a row right like and it was like the past two years that it got yeah. down to like negative 12 or something like that and i mean that's one thing though but the wind chill is a whole other thing. I mean, it could go to negative 50. So you're definitely not going to be able 50. to have your... <laughs> I yeah. am horrified. That is 100 yeah, degrees know. colder than Tucson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that right? It's That's cold. right. Yeah. 100 yeah. degrees colder. I know. I know. But, I mean, it is a different kind of temperature here. There's really no humidity in the winter, but it does feel different than... Like, like our summers feel so much different than Tucson even falls, like, because of the humidity, you know. Yeah. But you're definitely not going to be able to keep your plants out there for sure, like, unless you get it insulated. Because the windows, like, just the amount of windows you have, mm-hmm. looking at that, I'm like, those are all going to freeze. Like, you're going to have frost and ice on your windows, and your plants are just going to be like, nope. I am shook to the core. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh. Right. So... <laughs> I've been able to maintain it at, like, above 65 degrees, um, but that's, oh, that's with, good. with nighttime temps at, like, 30, 40s, 30 or 40. Okay. Um, I will let it get down to 55 degrees, but once it's getting colder than that with the heater, I'm going to move them out mm-hmm. because, you know, 55 degrees is probably, like, the lowest threshold that houseplants can handle, you know, typically. Um you might see some negative effects if they sit in that constantly, but that's the lowest right. they could go. Uh, like limbo. <coughs> How low can you Bless go? You? How low can Bless you, go? you, Adam. <laughs> anyway, so... No, that was a cough. Oh, that but sounded just like a sneeze. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, I'm going to see how long they can stay in there, but I'm just anticipating the the winter ahead. We will see. But as far as placing the plants, I, okay, listen to this. I found an interior designer on Instagram. Well, she found me and I followed her back because I was like, this is amazing. And she mm-hmm. integrates plants into her home designs. Like 
That's a big Ooh. part of it, of her work. And I was like, hi. Um, <laughs> hi, Micah. <laughs> <laughs> hi. I, like, I messaged her like a minute after she followed me. I'm like, I look so desperate, whatever. So we got to chatting, and I think she's going to come on my channel, but also she's going to help me with my house and nice. designing and with the plants and everything. So it'll be really good. Very That's cool. cool. That's awesome. I really enjoyed your video on your um, lifestyle channel about like designing with plants. That was really fun. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I think much. it helps a lot of people to like visually see that, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's difficult to show it in your own space because your own space is so unique. So in that video, I showed like right. a bunch of different spaces. Then um, that was really fun. I actually filmed that video a couple of months ago and then my screen recording did not save. So I had to redo oh. it. I was like, I cannot do this. I waited like three months and then I re-recorded oh, no. it just now. Yeah. But anyway, that's the update on my plants. Yeah. I'm excited to see like your porch and like how everything's set up like especially in the springtime like once the weather starts to warm up you're gonna get so inspired Mm -hmm. and like just totally make that room everything it's gonna be so cool oh my gosh i'm stoked it'll be so good and i'm excited to do like patio furniture like i kind of want to like build my own patio furniture it'll be so good for sure yeah ladies and gentlemen welcome to the stage patty o furniture (laughs) Oh, oh, you want to know what Adam is the CEO of? Dad jokes. Like bad dad ones. Jokes. <laughs> bad. He's wearing dad his dad jokes. hat. What is Nicole the CEO of? <laughs> Fucking the <bad>. F word. <laughs> it was funny because I remember the first time Adam was like, oh, oh, you you cuss and i'm like oh we don't know each other very well yet <laughs> no i was glad because then i mean i like to throw in a few sentence enhancers now and then and uh <laughs> yeah i just was like i just never know people's comfort level on that so yeah, my mom my mom talked like a sailor my whole life so like i i'm just adjusted to it <laughs> so what am i the ceo of the F, the F word. The, the F, F word. The, the F word yeah. And also you're the CEO of Fuck back to my channel. 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 Becca is the CEO of the hair flip. Oh, yeah. Ooh. I do and have the messy hair flip bun. Down. The messy bun. Yeah, that's. And the, and the nipple and, lip color. And duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole is the CEO of not touching cactus, but loving them. <laughs> I was laughing so hard. Your video, Nicole, where you were like, yeah, I like to use this stick so I never touch the cactus. I'm like, oh my gosh, Nicole. It's spineless. It's literally a spineless cactus and she's like still using a stick. I'm like, come on. Hey, there could be surprises. Oh my gosh. It's just so funny. But you got that scale off. Let's let's hear your update. You got scale on your oh, yeah. spineless Apuntia. Yeah. Oh dear, 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 dear. And a lot, and of, scale. <laughs> a lot <laughs> of scale. Like, how does <laughs> let me ask you guys a question, okay? How does one not notice that much scale on a single plant? <laughs> like, let's be real. And that happened really fast because I just moved my um I have like a low lying teak bench that I have all my cactus on, and I moved it out of my office into my kitchen like just a couple months ago. And I bought that cactus, probably that was like the last cactus I purchased back in maybe January or February, I think. I ordered it from a shop on Etsy. And um, yeah, it like happened so fast because I do look at my cactus and my plants pretty much every day. They're in the kitchen. Like I Mm -hmm. see them all the time. And it was like on the edge of the teak bench. So it wasn't (laughs) wasn't like it was buried because I have a lot, but it wasn't buried like amongst cactus like i have no excuse for this but anyway it was really bad there was scale all over it and at first glance i was like are these mealybugs so i literally just sat there for like a good five minutes and stared at them like tried to get my (laughs) my best vision going and just waited for them to move like blew on them a little bit and i was like no nobody's moving 
But then when you <laughs> when you wipe it with a Q-tip and alcohol, mealybugs turn brown. And my mom, when I my mom's cactus got scale, hers were like established, like it was like brown hard scale, <laughs> and this just it was gross. She got it on her fairy castle cactus, which has all the crevices, all the yeah. spines. Mm-hmm. It was tragic. Um, and this just wasn't like that. So I was very like, is this scale? But it definitely was because they were starting to develop that hard shell on the outside. Um, they were just white. I don't know. But I got it all off with no gloves on. <laughs> and I filmed it. But yeah, um, my plants, my plants. So confession, I've gone the past two years of being a, a plant mom like full-time plant mom with no grow lights. Like I had one of those like old, not old school, but like one of those circular purple lights a long time ago. And I just couldn't do it because of the the light just gave me a headache. Mm -hmm. So I've been saying that I was going to get grow lights for like two years and I still haven't gotten them. But Adam just inspired me to get some. So they're in my cart. I'm going to order them. And they're going to go on my white Ikea shelves because I feel like my plants really do struggle in the fall and winter months. Like, they really do. Like, I have leaf drop for sure. Um, And, like, there's, I mean, no growth is fine because most plants go dormant in the wintertime anyway. A lot of plants go dormant in the wintertime. But I just feel like they, they really do struggle. And I usually lose a few plants during the winter. So right now they're okay. But I just have a feeling like one day, like, it's going to drop to below 30. And they're going to be like, "What? where's my light? Like, what's going on? And especially with how gloomy it is, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So You know, I will say that those grow lights kind of serve dual purposes because... Uh, they have like aluminum or metal backing, which I have, you know, used 3M like double stick tape on the mm-hmm. bottom of the glass shelves. But the backing gets warm. So it mm-hmm. actually kind of like makes it like the shelf that it's mm-hmm. under. It makes it like a heat mat. So like mm-hmm. my Ikea shelves that I have all those in, if I like touch the glass or like the plants that are sitting on top of the shelf, they're like a little warm, which I was like, well, that's probably not a bad idea. You yeah, know. no, definitely not. And I think it would really benefit my plants too. Um, but I mean, so far so good like with I have a lot of plants in Lekka. I think I counted like over 70 plants in Lekka, and I'm actually recording a video today um checking all the roots of them. And I haven't lost like I'm on my mom plants 11. Okay, so I'm not that far into it yet. <laughs> but I haven't lost any. Like, there's no root rot on any of them. Like, they're all doing really, really well. So that's a good thing. And this is going to be my first winter with that many plants in Lekka because I think I st- – no, actually, this will be my first winter because I think I started in March, my Lekka journey. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be interesting to see the difference in, like, how they do in soil versus Lekka. Yeah. But yeah. I've been seeing a lot of people convert back to soil from Lekka. Have you yeah. guys seen that? I've been seeing it a lot. I yeah. have. And people, I've gotten a few messages of people saying that they went back. And I don't know, what do you what do you think the reasoning is to that, Adam? Do you think it's just because like they're outgrowing their pots or they're struggling like Um, I have I've heard some scuttlebutt about people saying that you know, plants do really well for like a short term in LECA, but it might not be a long term solution. And I've struggled with that thought too of like sometimes being worried because a lot of my plants that I absolutely love are in LECA and they're growing so incredibly well. But Doug Chamberlain, who does a lot about Hoyas on, he has a YouTube channel, um, but Vermont Hoyas is where he's from. Like that's what his name is. And he... He's done a couple update videos about plants in LECA or a hydro environment opposed to soil. And, you know, I think it works really well for some, especially like Hoya. It works very well for some Hoya. Uh, But some just don't like it. And I've noticed, like me personally, the ones that get like woody, woody stems as they mature, they don't seem to love being in LECA. But... um, you know, Lekka is more involved. I think it was like 
it was this fad for a while that everyone was like, oh, you know, I have to, you know, like, it's like this cool new thing. But like, when you get down to it, you got to, you know, I was going to do a video. I think I maybe talked about this, about the five myths Mm -hmm. of LECA, like my top myths. But like, you got to pH balance your water. You got to get your nutrients right. Like, there's a lot of stuff involved in it. And I just think that sometimes it's easier for someone not to care about that and to just put it back into soil and just have to water it instead of having to like do all that other balancey stuff. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say that I feel like it it could possibly be human error there. Like people may just be getting lazy with it or not just like getting tired of doing that and mixing the nutrient solution, but I haven't I haven't gotten tired of it. Like I feel like it's I feel like it's pretty easy. So I don't know. The thing that's been toughest for me with LECA is as plants grow, just like supporting them in in the LECA. Because, you know, with soil, you could just stick a support pole in it and it's pretty sturdy, but LECA doesn't hold it. No. As well. You, you zip tie yours to your like to your net pot, right? I do. I zip tie some of the, the bamboo or the, the PVC pipe to. Yeah, the it net is. Pot. It's, it's difficult and that makes it harder for like you know, flushing your plant. And yeah, it is difficult. And I think that's why I like to keep my Hoya smaller because all of my Hoya, except for like two, are in LECA just because they love it so much. But they grow fast. When they do grow fast, they grow. (laughs) And like to put those poles in the pots, it's, it's difficult. Also, that reminds me, can you send me a link to your hoop thingies that you have? Yeah, an affiliate yeah. link. Thank you. Oh, okay. unless it's in your store. Is it in your store? It's in my uh, uh, pot it like it's hot group on my Amazon store. Pot it like it's hot. And it's the big okay, ones cool. that you use for your Hoya? Uh, the circular ones I put in there. And then also I think the four foot hoops. Have you seen people using few. those hoops as a headboard? Um, You know, I think I have seen very similar ones being made. Are you going to do that? No. I want to do something else for a headboard, but I was just asking because I was looking for like really big ones to do it because we have a king size bed and I don't. Yeah. The thing is, like handcuffs don't really stay on those because they're so flexible. So like it's just not practical. We have to mark this episode as explicit. (laughs) This is explicit and like filled with outtakes. Filled. Handcuffs. <laughs> There's more outtakes in this than there is. You're it's right. like our it's like our collab videos. Yeah, honestly. <clears throat> yeah. Have fun, Adam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, you shouldn't edit that out. I'm not no. I'm not going to. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so yeah. Nice. Um what were we talking about? Oh, plant chat. So Yeah, so what about you? What about your plants? How are they doing? Um, you know, they're all doing quite well, it seems. Uh, I had, and I talked about that in one of our other episodes where I had the bout of thrips, um, mm-hmm. which was stressful. It still kind of is. And I found a bunch of spider mites. So I kind of treated all of the Hoya just because I did see a lot of, of spider mites on my Hoya. Uh, so we're getting over that. And I actually can see signs of new growth on some of the Hoya that I saw the mites on and that were growing really weird. And now and they're put, pushing out a bunch of new growth. So that makes me hopeful. Oh, good. But yeah, all in all, it's pretty good. Like moving to Arizona was a game changer for plants because, you know, even though we do have less daylight here, it's considerably more daylight than what both of you get. Um, yeah. which surprises me, Nicole, that you've never had grow lights, given that you have your love of cactus and you actually keep them like really healthy. I mean, I have lost some plants along the way and I probably can attribute a lot of that to lack of light. Like I think I could. Um, yeah. so I'm not being the best plant parent I could be. I know I need to get lights, but yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy. I mean, I keep them near windows. That's pretty much all I do, but I don't know. Yeah. I, when I moved to Arizona, I then bought a light meter just to like see what the sitch was. So I was trying to just understand the lighting situation. And I was like walking around with this light meter, like judging all of my windows, like, you know, 
with their readings. Um, <laughs> but I think no matter what, like as long as I have an open window here, like it's going to be sufficient lighting. Because, you know, like there were there were times when I realized that, like when I walked into Becca's house and your bathroom had the one, you know, the one light in your mm-hmm your shower and your bathroom plants were like treasure plants for me too. And I'm sure they are for you as well. Mm -hmm. And they were all doing really well. And then I was like, Mm -hmm. I think I'm stressing too much about light. Yeah. Cause, uh, I think I have sufficient light. So, um, we did get some of those UV protectors on the front window cause it's a South facing window. Oh, but you know, in the winter I should probably take those off because that'll heat up the house. Yes. When yeah. the sun's coming in there. But in the summer, direct sun doesn't come through that window. So I was like, why the heck did I even get these things? <laughs> because if they're too close to the window, they can burn, right? In yeah. Arizona. Yeah. 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 South windows, definitely. And west sometimes, but usually south. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's kind of like where we are. I, I did get another overseas Hoya order, and they're basically all rehab stuff type situation so So disappointing that's what's going on with um with that so i have a couple prop boxes started i chopped my big my prized hoya well i always refer to it as my prized hoya i didn't think it was special i got it because i loved it and then when i saw it in person and from everyone's comments it just seemed like it was like a hoya everyone fell in love with the obabata vergata splash Splash. and it is Splish splash. It is gorgeous. I will admit that. But um, yeah, so I chopped that up and have some propagations starting. That's something I'm not very good at is like constantly keeping propagations Mm -hmm. or even like knowing what I have in my collection. I've been meaning to start like a spreadsheet just to like have something that if someone wants to do a trade down the line or if I want to do a trade, I'll just I can just send like this is what I have kind of thing. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's a really good idea. But you'll have to black yeah, out all some I'm, plants because people will be like, I'll have yeah. a cutting of your elbow that is one leaf. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You're like, thank you, three hundred dollars. I was I was thinking of kind of chopping and propping and maybe selling some cuttings, but like now's not the season for it at all, unless it's local pickup, which I think would be better. Like if I just posted on like Offer up or Facebook Marketplace, even though I despise Facebook. Um, or I think indoor be better. directory Chicago. Bam. Boom. Boom. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people in Chicago on there. There's a good really? chunk of us. Hmm. Yeah. It's my crew. It's my crew. I've recently started like cutting things and and offering them up like for sale. Mm-hmm. And it, it always just stresses me out because I don't. You know, a lot of these plants I've had for a long time. So what I'm cutting is not like, I don't want to say like I'm trying to recuperate a cost because they're just plants that I've had in my collection and I just, I kind of want to share them, Yeah. you know, when I when I feel like it. <laughs> I, right. I mean, I'm not saying that as a mean way. It's just more of like a, I don't want people just like asking me for plants. Like if I decide I want to share a plant, you know, that's great. But I've been trying to do that more, but I'm scared. I'm always scared to like list a price because I don't want it to be seen as seen as like too high. So I think I always err on the side of like too low. And I always ask. Uh, there's two of my good Instagram friends. I hoard plants and Plant Mom. We kind of have a group chat, and they're Hoya heads, like the biggest Hoya heads. And so I always ask them, like, what do you think about these prices? Because personally, I'm not on the Facebook purge groups. Yeah, I'm not either. And I don't even like that word purge. You know, I think it has it has connotations for, you know, eating disorders. And so yeah. I think that needs to be changed. But mm-hmm. I, d- I just don't know what the prices are because I'm also not searching. I've never been one to, like, keep a wish list and, like, constantly search plants. Um, mm-hmm. Not that I see anything wrong with that. But so, like, I just don't even know where market prices, like, are with some of this stuff. So that's where I get a little stressed with, like, plant sales. Yeah. You know, I posted a couple cuttings of some Hoya a couple months ago. I was just chopping, propping, and I was like, let me see. And I sold them on OfferUp. I think I told you guys this. And I had, like, four different people reach out to me and say, you should be selling this for more money. (laughs) But I was like, 
Yeah, and basic ass Hoya too. Like it wasn't anything special, like Pubucalix or Shepardii. But I was like, really? Like it's an unrooted cutting. Like I, some of these I just cut. And then I had people asking me like if I could just like if I had any more or like if the mother plant, if I could just cut it and they didn't even want it rooted and they pay the same price. And I'm just like, what is going on? I mean, this is a totally different podcast topic, but it was kind of crazy. Like I'm not trying to. If I paid a certain amount for a plant and like, yeah, you're growing it and you're taking the time to propagate it. But at the same time, it's like such a small cutting. I just feel like, I don't know, like there should be a cap on rates, in my opinion. Like I'm not ordering them from overseas or anything. So this is like simple stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why I I have like personal issues with things like auctions. Like... eh. And I, listen, I get it. If the money's going to like a good cause or it's being donated. And then also there's the part of me that's like, well, it's not really my place to tell a business how to run their business. So I want to say that too. But I just think with auctions, sometimes like people will get the thrill and they'll pay like way more than they would if they were just to find it in a store. You know what I mean? And that's like good for like think raising money, like for charities and things like that. But if you're just, mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like plant auctions have become like a really big thing just for businesses to do, which is totally their prerogative. It's just that those plants are selling for way more than they would if they were just yeah. to mark them for sale. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's hard. It's it like a be, hard it, balance. I do. It could be unhealthy for like someone just coming into the plant community yeah. and not knowing these things, you know? Yeah. I, And I don't think that this is everybody who ever does a plant auction, but... To me, at first, when they started happening by, like, the big sellers, it felt like it was a litmus test to find out how much people are willing to pay. So then it was almost like market research to then raise prices. And I understand that there's a whole supply chain. And that supply chain, because of COVID and, you know, the popularity, has Mm -hmm. had some stressors. So I do know that, like, prices are going to increase just because demand's increasing. Like, it's just economics. But... The auctions, when they started about a year ago, felt like it was kind of like that's why they were doing it. Mm. Some of the big the big sellers, but I don't know. That's just my own opinion. Yeah, I mean, it would make sense. I I just I feel weird about auctions, so I don't know if I'd ever do one. And it, if I did, I'd be like capped out at this price. I don't know. But I was in a, well, yeah, yeah. I was in a group that had like. I was so confused by the way that it worked, but I was so pleased to be in this group because I thought that they had a cap on the price, but it, they they had a reserve price, which meant the lowest that they would be willing to sell it for. And Mm -hmm. I remember like bidding on things and they'd be like, reserve has been met. And I was like, awesome. Like no one can bid any higher. And like I won. And then someone bidded higher and I was like, wait, what's going on here? And then (laughs) someone told me, like they commented in a video and was like, no, that's the minimum that they would take. And I was like, awesome. I don't understand that with with auctions. Then why not start at that price? Why are you starting at like a dollar? Like stupid. Just for the thrill of it? Like I don't get it. I don't know. To get people to... I don't know. Oh, I have a question. Becca, have you set up your greenhouse yet? Or are you going to do your greenhouse? Mm. So it's set up outside right now. And I'm kind of... Sorry, I just took a bite. (laughs) (laughs) You're like, no, don't ask me a question. Okay. It's set up outside right now. And I'm using it as just storage for extra pots and like... uh, What is it? Insecticide and stuff like that. Just because Mm -hmm. I didn't want to put it inside the house. Like, I'm pretty sick of looking at it. It's so ugly and I'm over it. But it (laughs) it is helpful. It's just so ugly. So I want to either, like, move into the Ikea greenhouse cabinet situation or just not have one. Because the humidity is pretty high here. Um, Mm -hmm. It's been, like, well, the lowest I've seen is 40%, which is pretty much the highest I saw in my old house. So. Oh, yeah. We're moving up. Um. Yeah. moving on up moving on up <laughs> yeah there's been some days where inside of my sunroom it's been like 80 percent humidity like it's probably 80 percent in there right now because it's sunny and warm so mm-hmm. i don't know if i'm gonna need it and if i do i'll probably try to find something prettier but i'm using it as a storage shelf right now because it's still a shelf you know it still works just fine yeah 
Have you guys seen the... There's a hashtag or there's a page IKEA greenhouse cabinet on Instagram. Are you yeah. guys follow it? Okay, yes. I just discovered it, and I feel like you guys may have talked about this before, but I just discovered it, and I'm obsessed with all these different ideas. And they're they're like feasible. Like IKEA is not expensive, you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love it. But you sometimes know you can get really lucky and find one in the as is section. Oh Ooh, man, that would be Seriously. nice. That'd be really nice. I was gonna say, you know, IKEA is sold out of a lot of things because their even their suppliers were affected by COVID and all of that. Right. So like, I was trying to buy some pieces that I wanted to like do an IKEA flip because I finally am able to do those things now with tools and whatever. And all the things that yeah. I wanted to use are sold out. And I was like, this is awesome. Oh. Oh man, Darn. are you close to an IKEA or no? Uh there's one in St. Louis, like an hour and a half okay. away. So yeah. I wouldn't say I'm like close, but it's closer than not. That's how my IKEA used to be because I was in Bloomington and mm-hmm. the closest one was up in Schaumburg. So yeah, oh, like, that's the one you went to. Um, there's one in Schaumburg and one in Bolingbrook. Bo- Bolingbrook, the, whichever one had three floors because one of them's smaller than the other one. That's Schaumburg. That's yeah. the one I go to, but it's only 15 minutes for me. Could you imagine if we like? walked by each other at some point in our lives we probably did adam oh yeah. my gosh you were probably that person that was flipping me off as i was driving because i was going too probably, slow probably <laughs> probably <laughs> i remember that day now <laughs> <laughs> uh, fucking vibes oh my god that's so funny um yeah i actually i think that the <laughs> item that i want is in stock at that schlomberg whatever you're saying Schlom- <laughs> schlomberg oh <laughs> like at the schlumbergera location <laughs> <laughs> that was a weird laugh on my part wait did you say schomburg okay i think the item that yeah. i want is in stock there and i was like is it worth driving six hours and then i was like no yes <laughs> you'd be 15 minutes away from me <laughs> that's so lucky that you live 15 minutes away from ikea i hope you know that yeah and i'm not there very often because well in my defense i don't need anything but our entire house could be in an ikea catalog like every piece of furniture we own is from ikea, IKEA. Mm-hmm. yeah literally like i don't know it's just so easy because we we've moved so many times in the past and ikea furniture comes in pieces and it's like the couches yeah and it's just easy it's easy to travel with it's affordable you know yeah Yeah. we have an ikea couch as well and i'm looking for a new cover for it and the cover Mm -hmm. is almost as expensive as just buying a new couch and i'm like oh my gosh this is so annoying it's like 500 bucks and i think the couch was not that much it, i mean it wasn't mine it was already like it was daniel's mm-hmm. but i've just looked at getting a new couch in general and it's like you might as well but i think i'm gonna get a new cover yeah. for it it's more or sustainable. you could just you could just dye your cover that's true oh that's true but it's like stained i know but if you mm-hmm. dye it like a darker color maybe okay if it's 100 percent cotton yes but i think it's polyester oh mm. I could try it. That's a good idea, Adam. It's worth a shot because I was just going to throw it away. So that's that's a good point. I could try to dye it. We were looking for a cover, too, and we found this company that makes specific, like, Ikea couch covers. But they are really good quality, but really, ex- like, the leather ones look uh-huh. so cool. Is it comfort but works? It's really, I think so. That's what we're looking at. I think at. so. Okay. Really expensive. Really expensive. I wanted one that's like linen and it's like $900. I'm like, okay, no. <laughs> Might as well just yeah. buy a new couch. Like, we, okay, we went to the furniture store uh, two days ago and we found this couch that we really love, but it's just way too big for the space, which makes me really sad because our living room is so little. It's like a little den, you know, because uh, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. it's an earth home. So it's so dark in there and it's small. So you can't have big furniture or else it'll just look so crowded so did you go to ashley furniture no it was a competitor to ashley okay it's like a locally owned i haven't had good success with ashley furniture really i mean the couch i got from there just like pill it started pilling up really bad like the whole couch okay you know and i just i was like well that's kind of a cheap fabric kind of thing but then i got a couch from joybird which has like beautiful mid-century modern furniture. It's it's pricey. 
it's a high price point, but it was a very, very well made couch. And I yeah. loved it. Well, I because like... I'm six I'm six four and it's really hard for me to find a couch where I can lay like fully oh, flat. Yeah. Yeah. And the one from Joybird I could and it was, it was like it was like it was heaven. Yeah, new couches, it's just so stressful. Yeah. It's so expensive to move and do all these things. Just don't do it. Save your money. <laughs> Stay where you Save are. Save it. It's I expensive. Do... I do want to circle, I always say circle back. When I'm editing these episodes, I'm like, I can tell the phrases I say all the time, which like, and circling back to, uh, mm. <laughs> but <Glasses. laughs> your humidity made me realize like when I moved here to Arizona, one thing I did want to talk about was this like, I have felt like a shift in my collection of plants of like towards, well, it's towards Hoya, but it was starting to be towards Hoya, you know, before the the Hoya craze, but not really. Like so I mean, it's kind of you like Hoya first. No, I knew as soon as I said <laughs> that you, you were going to say that. There were there were plenty of people who loved Hoya way before me, but <laughs> Hoya just do so well. And I know that like some of them really do love humidity, uh, but I was finding a lot of stress in my collection, my plant collection, and having to like have all of these things, like having to have a humidifier that I need to be cleaning and filling and mm-hmm. in making things work that just weren't natural to the the space I had. So I felt myself shift away from the plants that needed that to the plants that I could keep in my space without having to like add on a bunch of extra equipment. I do have grow lights in in spots, but uh you know, in the winter here our humidity will get maybe to the 50s indoors but like in the summer like you're lucky to hit you're lucky to hit like 20 30 if even yeah it's so dry so um that's one thing like as far as like a plant update is i find myself sticking away from plants that i have to make special accommodations but the ikea greenhouse cabinet i would love one of those and like put a couple of my precious ones in mm-hmm. that situation Mm-hmm. You know, Becca, you can always like convert your greenhouse that the ugly one into like just leave it empty for like a what's the word I'm looking for? Isolation if you get like spider mites mm. or something. The hospital wing. Yeah. The bubble. The hospital bubble wing. Boy. Yeah. The west wing. That's a great idea. Yeah. That's a great idea because it's high humidity, even though spider mites still loved to live in there. <laughs> Those little fuckers. Oh, I will say, I haven't seen any spider mites or pests. Knock on wood, very loudly. But I haven't yeah. seen I don't have any, wood. any pests on my plants, which a bunch of people were warning me, like, hey, if there's ever a time for you to get a pest outbreak, it's right now. And, of course, I haven't seen anything. Like, I really need to, like, fine-tooth comb look through everything, but I have not seen any. Yeah. Yeah, because when your plants are stressed, it's when they're more susceptible to pests, right? Yeah, and they were, like, all up in each other's chili, like, big time, overlapping. Yeah. Like, so many leaves were touching. Like, as soon as I could get them not touching each other, I did. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> that stressed me out. Yeah, when I moved from Illinois to Arizona, that's when I had a spider mite outbreak because one plant, I didn't know, had it. And they were all just, like, piled in. Whee! They were like the little pig in the car hanging out the window. Wee, yeah. Wee, wee, wee. They had a heyday. Oh, my gosh. No, now I just have like real spiders. So maybe that's why I haven't had them, perhaps, because I know for a fact that there are a lot of spiders in my house. And it doesn't... There's a lot of freaking spiders in the Midwest, period. Like we yeah. have we have spiders all the time. And I find regular spider webs on my plants. Mm-hmm. Uh, that doesn't say a lot about my clean leaves. But anyway... <laughs> Um, and so maybe their spiders are eating your spider mites. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping. Every time I see a spider, I just leave it. Like if it's in the sunroom, I'll just leave it. If it's in my bedroom, I'll probably move it. But you know, I haven't seen them in my yeah. bedroom, but in the sunroom, I've seen like, I saw one today while I was filming. It was on my microphone and I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds hey. good. Wilbur. Yeah. Oh, geez. <laughs> Aw. Anyway, you fell again. I just keep falling. Do we think that that wraps it up? 
a nice little plant chat for your Monday. Yeah. I liked it. If you feel so inclined, please leave us a review on your podcast listener that you are using. Reviews help us out tremendously. And yeah, they just spread the word that the podcast is decent and <laughs> listenable. <laughs> We're decent. Because your ears don't bleed while you're listening. <laughs> Fucking vibes. <laughs> oh my God. We're going to get a three-star review just because of how many times we dropped the F-bomb in this video. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. We, we will mark it for explicit. <laughs> I apologize. But anyway, yeah, thanks for listening, you guys. Hope you enjoyed. Yeah. Oh, wait. What else are we supposed to do? Oh, follow our pod <laughs> together. Follow, follow. Instagram. I need a script. Um, you can find us on Instagram <laughs> at Potted Together and also individually at Not Dude, at My Clean Leaves, and at De La Plants. So, yeah, that's all the plug in. Plug, plug, plug. Right? We're done plug, plug, plugging plug. in. All right, let's unplug. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> all right, guys, we're so happy you were here for today's episode, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And also, Nicole and Becca, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. I hope you do too, Adam. Thanks. We'll talk to you later. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>